This week we're talking about CSS layout, the box model, and how to how to get your page to look uh, the way you want it to. How to you know create headers and how to divide it up into different sections and so on. And I've got a longer video that uh, you can go through next after this one where I'm gonna I'm gonna recreate YouTube in CSS and show you how to use the things we're learning this week and last week to be able to take a style and you know build it yourself in CSS. But I thought just before that, I would do something shorter and I would talk about the basic ideas of everything that the notes are talking about here with the box model and what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch and I have a, a really basic page here and I wanna just show you a couple of things related to how the browser uh, builds what it builds. So the first most important thing that we're talking about this week is this concept of the box model. And you'll see diagrams like this, or if I'm over in my dev tools, you'll see Chrome has a version of it here too. And if I select an element like the body, for example, or this paragraph element, what you're gonna see is that it's gonna display for you all of the different parts of this element and the way it gets laid out. So the, the innermost part of it is the content part. And that's what we tend to think about when, when I have an element so like here I have a paragraph element. This paragraph element has some content inside it. Content is being displayed like so here. And that's what we think about when we think about the element. But the browser thinks about the element, but it also thinks about these extra rings that go out all the way out to the margin. So it thinks about padding, a border, and a margin. Now, sometimes these elements aren't gonna have all of them. They're only gonna have some of them or they're gonna have none of them. And so I wanna take you through and just show you how, how this works essentially. So when you're thinking about an element, an element has content, padding, border, and margin. All of those things come into play when you're trying to size things, lay things out on the screen, etc. Okay, so before we get there, let's talk about the fact that we've been learning about block level elements and we've been learning about inline elements and they behave differently. So you'll notice as an example, I have this paragraph element here. Paragraph element is a block level element. And what that actually means is that when the browser lays it out, it's going to, you can see that this element has the full width of the screen. So the blue that you're seeing, the blue that Chrome is highlighting, that's the content area and it is stretching it so that it is the maximum width. Now I want you to notice that it's not actually 100% of the browser. So it's pretty wide, but there's a little bit of space on the sides. There's white on the sides. Why is that? This paragraph element is inside of the body element. Here's the body element. And you can see that the body element has a blue content area and it also has a region on the outside of it where it has some margin. So if we look at how the body is being laid out here, being displayed, it's being displayed as a block and it has a margin of eight pixels on the top, on the right, on the bottom, and on the left, okay? No border, no padding, and then it has this content area. The content area has dimension, so a thousand pixels roughly by 146. And if I change, if I drag the monitor window, it's gonna adjust that. Um, anything that's laid out inside it is all gonna be relative to the parent element. So the parent element of this paragraph is the body. What's the parent element of the body? Well, it's the HTML element. Here's the HTML element here. That's our root, the very top element. So it goes HTML, body, paragraph, and so on, so on down. So if we look at something like this main element, the main element is inside of the body, which is inside of HTML, and it has child elements inside of it, okay? So if we look at this paragraph, we can see that by default, we have, um, we have 16 pixels above it, 16 pixels below it. Or if I look at this H1, it's got 21, roughly 21 pixels above it, 21 pixels below it, okay? So let's talk about these. Let's start out with margin, this outside box here. If I were to go to the body, for example, you can see that currently the body has eight pixels of eight pixels of margin. And you can see that it's only, it's only listed eight pixels once. 
Chrome is nice. It, if I expand this, it's going to show me that this is actually four different settings. So there's margin on the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could override this and put in my own margin. So if I said, give me a margin of 20 pixels, you'll see that everything bumps in. So it's now 20 pixels down from the top of the parent. So remember the parent is the HTML element, 20 in from the side, etc. If I said 200, it would push it way, way down. So now I have this big white space all around the outside of it where that thing is being placed, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of, get rid of this. I don't want that. Okay, so that's the margin. The next one is the border. So if I put a border around an element, the border can be specified having a width. So let's say I want a border that's one pixel. I want the border to be a solid line. And let's say I want the border to be green. So I'll give it a color. Now I could have said I want the border to be five pixels, right? I want it to be solid and I want it to be green. And you can see what's happened here. So now I have a margin that's eight. I have a border that's five and I don't have any padding yet. Let's add some padding. So, so the margin is outside of the border, then the border, and then what comes next is, you see how everything is really tight? All of this content is super tight to the green line. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna add a padding of another, say, 15 pixels. So you can see that now my content is this big, right? That's my content. But then I also have to take into account the fact that I have padding. The padding is between the content and the border. Then I have a border, right? And it can be any thickness. Like this, this could be like even thicker than five pixels, you know, so 15 pixels. So I have a 15 pixel border. Then I have a margin of eight pixels on the outside of that. So you have lots and lots of space that I can use when I'm trying to define how this thing is gonna look. Okay, I'm gonna refresh and get rid of all that. So the next thing we can say is that a block level element like say this pair or this heading one, you can see that by default, a block level element has 100% of the width of its parent. So this thing is 100% or 100, yeah, 100% wide within its parent. So I could change that width. I could say that the width of this is gonna be 50%, 50% instead of 100%. So you see that now that blue content box is half as big as it was. So the 50% refers not to the size of the monitor, but to the size of the parent, whatever the parent is. So I could also have said, I want this to be like 200 pixels, right? So if I do this, you can see that this, it's now not wide enough to display the content. So what the browser does, the way that a browser works is it flows the content down onto the next line, it wraps it. So that's what's going on here. The content's filling the box and then it hits the edge and it can't do anymore. So it wraps it down and it keeps going. So I have a width on this box that is 200. It's also possible to set a maximum width. So I could set a maximum width, let's say of 800 pixels. So here's my width. You can see that if the browser window doesn't fit it, or let's make it wider. Let's say that the maximum width is 1000 pixels. So if I, if I look at this, it's currently filling it, but if I go larger than a thousand, I go up here to say 13, you can see that it's capped it. It can't go any wider than that that's that that's the maximum it can do over here. Okay. So so far what I've been doing is I've been saying um, let's put a margin on or padding or a border, but you can also specify that you want to only put the margin or the padding or the border on one of the four sides. So if I was looking at this um, H1, for example, and let's say I wanna put more space between these two elements. So I wanna push everything down. Well, one thing I could do is I could say that I want the margin on the bottom 
of this thing to be, I don't know, like 250 pixels. And you can see that it's, it's pushed it way, way down. So now I have 250 pixels on the bottom of this thing, the margin of this thing. Now, another thing I want you to notice is this paragraph here. If I put on the top of this margin top 200 pixels, you'll notice that it doesn't push it 250 plus 200. It doesn't, it, it doesn't combine those. It collapses them together. So this margin and this margin are working together. So margins can can be collapsed into each other when you're aligning things together. As long as they both fit, whichever one has the bigger of the two, it's going to win. So if this one, if one can't fit inside the other, then it's going to have to it's going to have to change to accommodate that. So this same technique is really useful if you want to do things like put a line underneath something. So if I wanted to put a line underneath this uh, H1, instead of underlining it, I could say I want to have a border. I only want the border on the bottom. I want it to be one pixel solid and I want it to be dark gray like that. And you might look at that and say, I like that, but it's it's too close to it's too close to the text. I want to push it down a little bit more from the text. So if I want to put space between the content of an element and its border on one of the sides, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I have to say padding on the bottom is going to be, I don't know, 15 pixels like that. So now I have the content. It'll be easier if I highlight this. I have the content, then I have some padding, then I have a border, then I have the margin. So you can see that understanding where this space is going to get placed. Does it get placed next to the content? Does it get placed on the outside of the border, on the inside of the border? All of those things matter a lot when you're trying to figure out and do all of the, the layout that you're going to do. Okay, let's do another thing here. Let's put a, let's put a border, uh, two pixels solid uh, blue around this, uh, around our main, okay? So by default, what you're going to get is you're going to get this box, like you can see here. But I can also soften that if I want to by saying that I want to have a border radius of say three pixels or it's, it's, it's very small. So let me make it more extreme. So if I said um, 15 pixels like that or 25 pixels like that. So you can see that I'm, I'm rounding out the corners five pixels like so. So I can take that border and I can change. I can do a lot of things to play around with how the border looks uh, in terms of the color of it, the thickness of it. I can do rounding. You can get really advanced and do things with uh, graphics and backgrounds and so on, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about too much right now. Okay, so let's let's do something here uh, in my my default style sheet. Let's do some styles on these um, sections that are inside my main. So I'm going to say that for all of my sections, I'd like to have the background color be black. And I'd like to have the color of the text be white like that. And let me refresh this. So I have, and let's also put a, maybe a red, I'm going to say border one pixel solid red like that. So you can see that I have um, three divs and each of these divs has a line around it. So here's the first one, second one, and third one. And why don't we put something around main as well? So my main element, I'm going to set a border of one pixel solid green. I'm going to make it thicker so you can see it. Let's say four pixels. Okay, so I have my main element and my main element inside it, it has these three divs and how are they being laid out? So what's happening is the browser is putting the first div in and a div is a block level element. So it gets its own vertical space, which is why it's pushing the next one down below it and the next one down below that. 
So you can also see that what's happening for each of these is that they're getting automatically, they're getting 100% of the width available to them in the parent. So whatever the width of the parent is, that's what the width of these is gonna be. So for example, if I change the width of the main, if I said the width of this was 500 pixels, you're gonna see that all of the children inside of it, these three, they're also gonna become 500 pixels, so they're gonna be reduced to fit inside, inside of that, okay? So another technique that I'm gonna use a lot in the next video when I start doing this uh, YouTube layout is I'm gonna to have to lay things out where I distribute space, available space, between a bunch of elements. So I wanna quickly teach you about how this works. So one of the things that I can do is I can change the algorithm that the browser uses to lay out the space inside of a container. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Flexbox. Uh, I'm gonna use Flexbox as the way, I, in terms of how I want it to lay out the space. So my goal is I wanna be able to lay out all of these divs sideways, and I wanna, I wanna have the browser figure out how to space them out for me. So the first move I'm gonna make is I'm gonna to go to the parent element, in this case, the main element, and I'm going to specify that I want the display type of this element to be flex. Now, if I do nothing else, you can see that already it's very different. Like if I turn off display flex, you see what's happening? It automatically is doing this normal flow where it does the, the div and then it pushes it down to the next one and the next one gets pushed down. As soon as I say display flex, the browser is going to start managing how it lays things out. And instead of having these divs take up 100% of the width, what's happening instead is that they are taking up just the amount of space that they need. Now, if you look at this, what if I wanted these to be like clickable buttons? You might look at this and say, these are too tight. Like there's not enough space in here. How do I fix that? I need to put space between the words and the border. So if I wanna put space between the words and the border, I need to add padding. So let's say we put in five pixels of padding all the way around this thing. And let's say five pixels of padding is good, but we wanna have more on the left and the right than we do on the top and the bottom. So one of the things you can do with padding is you can write the top, the right, the bottom, and the left-hand values like that. So you imagine it's like going clockwise around a clock, the 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and back to 12 o'clock. So if I wanted to, I could say five pixels, five pixels, five pixels, five pixels, like that. That means exactly the same as saying five pixels. So if they're all the same, I can collapse them down. Now, another thing I might wanna do is I might wanna say on the top, I'm happy with five, but on the right, I want 10. On the bottom, I'm happy with five. And on the left, I want 10. So if I do it this way, it's going to stretch things out. Let's make it even more obvious. Let's say 15 and 15. So five on the top and bottom, 15 on the left and the right. So because the top and the bottom are the same and the left and the right are the same, you're gonna see it sometimes written like this. They're gonna shorten it down. So there are these three ways of doing it. Padding can be top, right, bottom, and left, or it can be all of them together, or it can be top and bottom together, and left and right together when they're the same. So you can decide how you're gonna do this. This works for the margin, it works for the padding, so you'll see this used. These shorthand methods will get used quite a bit. Okay, so I have three divs. These divs are laid out beside each other and they're being laid out beside each other because their parent is using Flexbox. Now, another neat thing I can do here is I can tell the browser how I want it to use all of this extra white space. Because look at all this space. This space is, is maybe not being used as efficiently as I want it to. So let's make a change. I'm gonna tell the browser that I want it to justify my content and I wanna space everything out evenly. So if I make that change, you'll see that what it's gonna do now is it's going to automatically, and this is gonna work even when I start changing the width of the browser. You see how it's still managing the width for me? Everything is stretching out like so. 
So I'm justifying my contents so that they're all spaced out evenly. Or I might say I want to center everything. So instead of having it be on the left, I want to have it all be centered. Or I want to have um, space around, I'll just show you the difference, space between. So do I want to have these two on the outside or do I want to have them, um, do I want to have some space around the edges? So I have a number of algorithms that I can use to lay out this content when I'm trying to put this together. Now imagine if if this was, you know, with 500 pixels, it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to do it inside of 500 pixels. And you'll see that the amount of space changes to accommodate it. So the key to using Flexbox is I set flex on the parent element. So I need to have a parent and then children inside it. And then it's going to lay out all of the children using Flexbox to figure out where it should put them. Okay, one last thing I want to show you before, before we leave the flex, talking about Flexbox. And that is another thing that I can do is I can use Flexbox to figure out how wide things should be. So I'm going to give each one of these sections a different width. Let's say that I want the first one, let's say that I want them all to be one third of the available space. Let's start there. So I'm going to say I want number one to be flex one, number two to be flex one, and number three also flex one. Okay, so what did that do? The parent is using Flexbox and each one of these children is specifying how much of the available space they would like to expand or shrink into. So how flexible are they going to be? So really what you're saying here is that I want to take up one third, one third and one third. And the third comes from the fact that I have one, two, three different flex units. But let's say that I want, let's say that I want this one here to be twice as big as the other two. So I'm going to change this one to two. So now what we're saying is I want this to be a quarter. I want this to be a quarter and I want this to be two quarters or one half. So now I have a, I have a different layout and the browser's figuring it all out for me. So if I stretch this out, you'll see that as I stretch it and change it, it's keeping track of this for me. It's, it's making sure that it's making sure that this works with the amount of flex that I'm giving it with each one of these. This is wrong, let me just fix this. So Flexbox is super powerful. I'm gonna use it a lot in order to make our designs work. Okay, so let's do one more, let's do one more thing here. Let's, let's change uh, the height of this. Okay, so let's say that we would like to have these sections be taller, okay? So let's say that I want the height of this to be uh, 100%, okay? Now you'll notice what happens is that nothing happens. So when you say that you want this to be height 100%, which is what it's doing right here, 100% means 100% of the height of the parent the parent's height is automatically going to be calculated by the height of the children. So the problem here is, and it's also going to be constrained by the height of its parents. So main is in body and body is in HTML. So the main can't, isn't, isn't tall enough. So if I said height 100% on the main, it still doesn't fix it. So how do I fix it? Well, if I go up and I say body height, 100% still doesn't fix it. But if I also add in the HTML element and I say that I want it to be taller. So you have to be careful when you're, when you're specifying that you want to use some percentage of height, you're bound by the height of your parent. And if the height of the parent element doesn't incorporate what you're looking like, the, the amount of height that you need, it's not going to work. Okay. So the notes for this week, 
go over lots and lots of different things. And I would, you know, click through these and there's really good documentation on how they work. You can try out different examples to see how each one of these different styles work. Play around with them. And a lot of CSS is just knowing what's possible. So take a look through, read through about um, some of these different aspects of working with it. If you want to learn more about Flexbox, I have links to a couple of games. So one of them is Flexbox Froggy. And it's a nice little game for trying to get you to go through these levels to figure out how do you get your frog to sit on top of um, the lily pads. And it'll help teach you how this works. There's other ones for some other different uh, layout algorithms that we're gonna do. There's also some stuff here with positioning and display. And I'm gonna use all of that when I build these, when I build this YouTube um, interface. So I'm gonna pause there and I'll get you to work your way through the um, recreating YouTube walkthrough as a way of practicing and seeing applications of all of these things.